Hi, welcome to Case of the Day. Um, um, I'm Bhavin Jankar. I've been doing this every day, Monday to Thursday. This is the seventh week. And uh, today we have 27th, the 27th case, and it's titled Diffuse uh, Crazy Paving. Uh, this is a 63-year-old man with CKD, recent TAVR, um, known case of ischemic heart disease, uh, uh, presented with breathlessness. And this appearance had been picked up on a CT five days ago. And the patient was actually sent for a PET CT to see if there was any other cause for this diffuse, crazy paving appearance. You have septal thickening, you have ground glass, and you can see that here very well. And there is subplural sparing, uh, as this red ar arrow shows. There was some uh, mnemonic consolidation in the right lobe lobe that has significantly regressed. But you can see a pacemaker lead. This patient is post-taver. There's diffuse coronary calcification. Patient had IHD. And um, lots of other findings um, to go with this, this appearance. And the PET CT did not show any other abnormality. And this is the only finding that we saw when I was reading this uh, in the afternoon. Now, crazy paving is defined by the Fleischner Society as focal areas of ground glass opacities, which have well-defined margins within which you have septal thickening and intralobular reticular lines. It's similar to crazy paving stonework. And we saw that a lot during COVID when we had these areas of organizing pneumonia or, and, and crazy paving where you have these areas of ground glass with septal thickening and lines within. But this, to my mind, is what you would call focal multifocal. But then there is this entity called diffuse crazy paving. Now, if you look at this patient with primary non-Hodgkin's lymphoma proven on biopsy, this is multifocal. This is not in that sense diffuse but if you did have diffuse like the case we have if you broke it down what would produce crazy paving it would be fluid blood lymph protein and tumor which would mean edema hemorrhage alveolar proteinosis lymphoma lymphangitis and and you can have rare things like neiman pick uh, where you have abnormal protein um, um, within the uh, septic so the archetypical diagnosis is alveolar proteinosis, subacute chronic presentation, no other predisposing factors. Of course, you can have secondary alveolar proteinosis, let's say due to another interstitial lung disease or drugs like uh, sirolimus. But this is the classic appearance. It's diffuse, typically symmetric, um, septal thickening and ground glass together, and your classic crazy paving pattern. And that's what you see on the coronal and sagittal images. Now, this is a patient with diffuse alveolar hemorrhage. And while there is crazy paving, we also see consolidation um, because of the blood. Um, and of course, there is subplural sparing. So it's not your classic diffuse appearance like the one I showed earlier, but nevertheless is crazy paving where if you have acute onset falling hemoglobin, you would be able to make the diagnosis. This is a patient with lymphoma who has a kind of crazy paving with septal thickening, ground glass. Uh, there was pleural involvement and we saw this uh, gastric involvement on the same CT and were able to suggest this diagnosis which was then proven. Lymphangitis only presents with septal thickening and rarely has a crazy paving appearance. And so both lymphangitis, lymphoma are more septal thickening predominant than true crazy paving. That leaves pulmonary edema. Now classic pulmonary edema is ground glass, pleural effusion, septal thickening, um, or as you see in this patient, septal thickening, upper lobes, little bit of perihilar ground glass. Perhaps you could imagine there's a little crazy paving here, but that's about it. And, you know, diuretics were given in 36 hours. Uh, everything's regressed. So classic edema is septal thickening, perihilar ground glass, and pleural effusion. But sometimes you could have a crazy paving appearance. So this is one such patient with cardiogenic pulmonary edema. And you can see here a multifocal crazy paving. Again, it's not as diffuse as um, we saw with alveolar proteinosis or the case in question, but this is um, uh, the classic appearance. And so when we come to it, uh, the 
a, the presentation, acute, subacute, subacute, chronic, would help us differentiate among these entities and coexistent factors. You know, does the patient have ischemic heart disease, volume overload, known malignancy, dropping hemoglobin, acute onset, would help us differentiate um, among them. So what is this? Um, given the history, the ischemic heart disease, post aver CKD, no medication that would produce, let's say, alveolar proteinosis, no other abnormal entity, no storage disorder, uh, this would then basically imply interstitial edema. Uh, we will be following up this patient. If anything untoward comes up, I will put up a post. But just the way, this was a way to show my thought process and how you think through when you see these patterns. And radiology is not in isolation. You need to have some understanding of the clinical presentation to be able to come to a diagnosis. So diffuse crazy paving is not very common has a short list of differentials and the pattern presentation and associated clinical features should help us in differentiating among edema, hemorrhage, alveolar proteinosis and lymphoma, lymphangitis. That's the WhatsApp channel and thank you for viewing this.